Hey Ron, it's Ivan. How you doing? Well, um, I just I appreciate your time, so no rush watching this or responding to it. And it's one of those things where it was harder for me to get all the stuff down on paper or type it uh, in a cogent manner. And so I figured it's going to be easier for me with the time I have to just kind of make this video because my thoughts aren't really entirely complete. And so it's going to be easy for me to make, hard for you to watch. So, or, uh, you know, it's going to take more time on your part. Uh, but I do... Um, I wasn't aware that you were at the con. I wasn't aware that you were quite so busy. You know, take a breath, man. And I'm really appreciating the diligence you're putting into Champions now and making sure that it comes out right because people just don't do that. And a lot of crappy games get produced or just half-baked. And uh, I'm wishing that I had backed that. At the time, I just didn't have a hell of a lot of money and Supers wasn't really beckoning to me and I was inundated with games I was learning. But uh, looking now and, and listening to some of the things you, you said about it, and the idea that, you know, the Champions in particular doesn't really define what your super, superhero is supposed to be in terms of, like, you know, who, you know, a code, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my kind of game. <laughs> so I will have to I have to pick it up when it comes out. Um, and actually, you know, I was I was a little bit put off, too, by the historical, I mean, I've never played Champions, but the historical... Um, um, idea or, or knowledge that it was it was a little a bit on the crunchier side, which is germane to this video. Um, there are a lot of things that I would like to talk to you about, and so I'm going to uh, restrain myself, other than just kind of mentioning that, um, you know, reading something like uh, Sorcerer uh, and the annotations therein, and starting to read the supplements, and um, some of the things you said in the, the uh, Tripwires video with Anthony, where I got a clearer picture of kind of where you're at or where you're coming from with some things, you know, especially you're talking about idiom. Um, and I just, you know, things kind of crystallized for me a little bit more. And so I, ah, I understand where he's at, you know, or where he's coming from. And so um, it's been, not that this video is about that, but it's definitely been my experience that, um, you know, games for a long time, you know, I couldn't figure out why games, certain games felt really good or certain sessions felt good and certain sessions felt bad. And it's much easier now for me to point at, you know, the, the idea that when it, when it was clear that the players were driving the bus, like they were deciding not necessarily everything that happened, but they were deciding what their characters did. You know, that always felt right to me on either side of the metaphorical screen. Um, and so, uh, anyhow, I don't want to get go down that rabbit hole because there's a lot of different tangential things I'd love to talk to you about and kind of bounce ideas off you. And, and there's parts where I think we're mostly in sync and parts where, like, I think we might have a disagreement here or there. Uh, but And sometimes it's bias and preference-wise, but sometimes it might be, have you considered this? Different different show. <laughs> but anyhow, just kind of want to throw that out there as, as a placeholder. Um, anyhow, um, the the thing that I'm, I'm running into now that I'm, that I'm noticing as I'm, I'm playing different games with my friends, that um, I, years ago I was in the, the kind of the rules light camp, you know, rules light versus rules heavy, you know, this is like when I um, discovered games like Pathfinder, and I was coming from these these older versions of Dungeons and Dragons, at least the, the way that we play them, where we use barely any rules. In fact, I'll give you a, a great example. My um, I was quipping about something about another game, which I'm going to get to. And I said, you know, the issue with, like, say, Fantasy Flight games, Star Wars, because that's what I'm playing right now with my friends. It's one of the games and their old Genesis system. I love the narrative dice system itself, the idea that you're, what, what you're doing is you're, you're making opposed rolls all the time. You're just rolling for both parties. Um, and the, the different symbols cancel each other out. You can kind of see where they came from, so you can narrate the hell out of the, where the successes and failures came from and how they canceled out. And it also gives you this orthogonal result of, of advantage and, and threat, and sometimes the extreme ends of that, which is triumph and despair. You know, so there's kind of two things happening at once. You know, do you fail or do you succeed? How well do you succeed? And then this orthogonal result of other things that happen, you know, which is just this big narrative space. I like that a lot. I think it's pretty cool. There is, in the game, like in lots of games, this vast library. And I'm not just I'm not talking about the splat books, although there are plenty. Um, but the, the library of other things that one must consider, whether they're talents or, you know, or in other games they, they might be called feats, or there are charts and tables sometimes when there's a critical hit. And let's, you know, there's a procedure for this. And then there's a, a formula for starship combat where you divide the silhouette of the ship by the speed and you know, whatever it happens to be. There, there's, there are things. There are a, a, a bigger, there's a big library of procedures and of um, stuff that goes along with the game that one must consult or one must be at least nowhere to find 
in the moment and eventually become like with any game you have those kind of parallel experiences the experience like in the game itself um, and the experience of the rules engagement and sometimes rules lookup which eventually becomes you know easier and easier over time as you become more and more um, comfortable with the system how it works and it becomes much more intuitive and then there's that third experience you're having where there's that the the watching the game and the camaraderie of your friends but that's a different story right so we've, we've Got that going on, but one of the things that, what does this have to do with my old D&D experience? One of my friends said, well, it's really not that much more, or probably the same as all the stuff that was contained in first edition AD&D. And I kind of laughed at it, and I said, yeah, I get it, I understand. I'm not going to defend that game, because that's a whole different animal. But I said, if right now, if I went through my books, which are probably right there on the shelf, you know, and I took out everything that I never used or used once and said, screw this, the volumes would be very slim. <laughs> it would be a very different, because that's the game we played, right? Or we, an amalgam of, you know, and some of the other D&D books are on there. You all know, you know all about that. Anyhow, this video ain't about that. What it is about is that I've noticed that, you know, like say I'm reading Sorcerer, looking at that thing, man, this is awesome. You know, I'm doing my Circle of Hands venture prep, which, man, I tell you what, three components, oh, man, what a pain in the ass. Because... You know, you said it in the book. There's, there's this time. It's, I'm not trying to say what's going to happen. That's not me. Like I don't, I don't want to do that. I've done that in the past. I think we all have. I think we all like find ourselves every moment, uh, every once in a while, thinking, "Hmm, this'd be kind of neat," and then saying, "No, I don't want to do that. I don't want, I want the players to drive the bus." But the not having connections between three components in this little place, especially, you know, we were thinking, you know, there's a lot of thought experience. Yeah, I don't think I want these two components in the same place because how could I possibly justify these people not interacting on a real serious level? All right. Tangent. Get rid of that. So I'm looking at, like, Sorcerer. Really, really elegant mechanic. You know, how the things happen. When do you engage the system? Why are you engaging the system? Makes perfect sense. Um, circle of Hands, once again. You know, it's different. But there's um, the rules, the procedures. They do what they're supposed to do. That's the wrong way to put it, because that's too much bias and preference. But that it's a smaller set of procedures. It's a much smaller library. It, you know, it's what are we, why do we have this library in the first place? What are we trying to get at? And I don't want to go, this is already getting too long, but I don't want to go down this rabbit hole too much, but I, I, we're going to have a discussion at some point because there is this thing where I wonder where does, um, where does story now end and the right to dream begin? And I know you've kind of said the hell with that. And I'm not talking about El Dorado either, but different tangent. But there is this thing, if, if I am... If I identify very strongly, like it make, like the, the right to dream kind of makes a lot of sense to me, but when I'm thinking about simulating, it's very abstract simulation, if you, if you know what I mean. Uh, I, I'm not, it, it becomes tedious and it's not why I'm there when there's all the little charts and graphs and tables and, and, and um, simulating like very minutia. I'm not, I'm not a physics simulator uh, fan. I'm more about simulating the genre, if it will, if you were. If you will, yeah. Anyhow, I don't want to get into the argument about that. But that's that's kind of what, you know, that's what I'm looking for. That's what feels the most right for me for a game to do. Sometimes I find these very simple systems just, I don't, not, don't like how they do it. It's like, yeah, they're really not creating the thing I want. Um, so I'm, it's not about minimalism versus a lot of stuff. But the, the issue I'm running into with Star Wars, I'm enjoying playing with my friends. I like playing with my friends. I love the core concept and the execution of the narrative dice system itself um, that's a lot of fun there's really a lot more to be to be uh, looked or said for that and, and you know I think there's other games that ought to do a little bit more of that however the part of it may just be me and the, the learning curve part and the the um, not feeling really comfortable with the game until I really kind of grok the fullness of it and that's kind of just a personal thing but uh, at the end of the day you know one of the things that um, I'm wondering is like once I do grok the fullness of this thing, to what end? Is this really going to enhance my experience? It, yes, it will enhance my experience of that game because I will understand how all of it works. But is that game now doing what I want it to do? Like, is it, it, it is the experience I'm getting is the product of play, you know, which occurs in the moment? You know, it's hard to tease apart the product and the process because they really can't. They're kind of and that's a topic I've been talking about a lot, but uh, haven't talked about it publicly yet. So we'll talk about that. <laughs> the point, point being, um, I'm just wondering, at some point, um, there's this diminishing return, at least for me. 
And I wonder what your experience with that has been. You know, because I, I will tell you right now, like um, the the creative agenda, or like the the step on up, is something that just doesn't really appeal to me. It doesn't, you know. In other words, that when I find out that that's what the game experience is, is about, and before I just didn't have the the words for it. Now it's time for me to go to work. Um, now I, I I'm realizing that, like, you know, I can identify it more when that is, you know, the the focus of play. Then, it's like I'm I'm yawning. I'm waiting for the pizza. It's like it's not why I'm there. It's um, let's say boring. It's just it's it's tedious. But I'm not necessarily, I don't believe that learning that whole vast library in that particular game has anything to do um, necessarily with the game being, you know, having that, that sort of creative agenda or producing that sort of experience. Um, it's more about the, you know, what the hell is all this procedure for in the first place? What is this actually creating? You know, for some people it creates something. I'm not knocking that. I'm just wondering, you know, more of like what that says about me and what that says about... Um, game experience in general because I've noticed that the games which where I end up feeling the most comfortable is where there's a smaller set of procedures like in other words in Fantasy Flight I, don't, yeah, I gotta go and you are probably sick of listening to this thing the idea that if, if you if I were to just take those narrative dice and just roll a bunch of uh, you know a success with a bunch of threat or despair it would be very natural to narrate you know to myself or as a group what that despair what that threat what that misfortune was and just make shit up and keep going um, and in fact I've done that in the past with, with other kind of mechanics that feels very very natural because there's a guideline hey this means something really effed up has happened okay figure figure out what that is you know incorporate that into the fiction let's let's keep going as opposed to the then the rules look up and the procedure and okay well we got three of these and uh, what is three of these worth what can I buy with that and you see where I'm going with that. There's there's a point of diminishing returns for me, where the the concept has now, a great concept has has kind of crossed over into tedium, and you know we're no longer playing the game, or we're no longer I'm, we're no longer there for the experience that I was looking for. But there are other equally simple systems out there where I'm just like, yeah, this thing produces crap. That's not what I want. Or it's missing this really vital thing here. They ought to have this one extra thing here because if there's a big giant hole, you could drive a truck through. And, you know, the stuff we make up has nothing to do with the system whatsoever, but we need to fill that hole. Anyhow, not sure if that made any sense. Talk to you later on.